Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com answering the questions that I get from you from around the world. Let's start off in a place called Dalton, Illinois. Um, Monier from Dalton, Illinois says, Who would win in a fight between Allosaurus and Acrocanthosaurus? Thanks for answering my question, and I hope mine is one chosen. Well, guess what it is, one chosen. So uh, congratulations to you, Monier. Who would win? Well, I got to admit right off the bat, I'm very biased because I love Allosaurus. It is my all-time favorite dinosaur in the world. So it's hard for me not to pick Allosaurus, but I have to say that... Uh, Acrocanthosaurus probably had an advantage in that he's a later dinosaur. And just like um, computers, just like modern cell phones, the dinosaurs that come along later have advantages that the earlier models didn't have. And so um, I would imagine that its brain may have been a little more advanced. Certainly it was a very big, powerful dinosaur. So I would have to say that given a fight between the two, even though they didn't live together at the same time or same place, um, I think Acrocanthosaurus might have been a bit of a match for a dinosaur like Allosaurus. All right, Taylor from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Hello, Dinosaur George. I was wondering if dinosaurs ever pass gas. <laughs> yes, they did, Taylor. And the main thing you wanted to make sure of is you didn't want to be behind them when they did that. Of course they did. All animals do, especially those that are the herbivores, those that eat plants. Um, eating a lot of vegetation causes a lot of gas buildup in your digestive system and it only has mostly one way to go. So like with all other living animals, they pass wind a lot. My family raises cattle. I can tell you firsthand, don't ever be around a bunch of cows because they are breaking wind every five seconds because of the amount of the gases that build up from the decomposing plant matter in their system. So for those of you that hate broccoli, here's my advice to you. If your mom tells you you have to eat it because it's good for you, tell her, okay, I'll eat it. But I cannot be responsible for the gaseous buildup that will occur within my digestive system. It's not my fault, mom. It's just the broccoli made me do it. Dinosaurs would have had that same excuse, except for they wouldn't have eaten broccoli. All right, Miguel from Miami, Florida. Do you think scientists will find a dinosaur larger than a blue whale? And did Tyrannosaurus outweigh Giganotosaurus based on recent research? Thank you for your time. Miguel, you're very welcome, and thank you for your courtesy. Uh, do I think they'll find one bigger than a blue whale? Well, depends on what we're talking about. If we're talking about mass or we're talking about length. Length, um, if Seismosaurus' estimate of size still holds up, and I don't know if it does or not, I think they were estimated to be 190 feet. That's certainly long, longer than or as long as a blue whale, so a, a, a right away, I think we've got some dinosaurs out there that may be as long, Seismosaurus perhaps. Um, I think when you get into like Argentinosaurus and Bruhothkiosaurus and um, who's the other monster, Sora Poseidon, those guys are not as long, but they have unbelievably massive bodies. And so in mass, they may be larger. So I don't know if it's been done yet or not, but I would not be surprised if it hasn't already been discovered and if one of those dinosaurs I mentioned or perhaps one I left off isn't bigger than a blue whale, it's pretty darn close and I'll bet you ultimately somebody will find one. Uh, to your other question, did Tyrannosaurus outweigh Giganotosaurus? Man, estimating the weight of dinosaurs is a very difficult thing because we cannot for certain know the muscle mass and muscle is what really adds a lot of weight to your body. We don't really know how massive their muscles are. Let me give you a for instance. Let's take the femur of a professional basketball player who happens to be very tall, and let's take the femur of a professional football player who may not be as tall as a basketball player. Now, certainly by looking at the length of the femur, we can estimate the size of the muscle that was attached. But I would propose that a football player's muscle is probably going to be considerably larger comparative to size than that of the basketball player. And so if we simply had the skeleton to estimate size, well, it wouldn't be fair to say the basketball player weighs more simply because he's taller than this football player. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So when we estimate the size of a dinosaur, first of all, with Giganotosaurus, it's not like we have 75 uh, um, uh, sp uh, specimens to estimate size on. So how accurate can you be with something as rare as Giganotosaurus? And really the same thing with Tyrannosaurus rex. How much can we really know based on the limited number of skeletons that have ever been found? My guess is, I look at the teeth. Giganotosaurus's teeth are very thin and blade-like, which is suggestive to me that he is a run-in, 
bite you kind of dinosaur, rip out a chunk and step away so that you die and he doesn't have to worry about breaking his teeth during a confrontation. When I look at the teeth of Tyrannosaurus Rex, they're so deeply rooted and they're so robust, I don't think he cared about that. So I think Tyrannosaurus Rex doesn't necessarily care about running and biting you and running off. I think he cares about hitting you like a freight train and knocking you off your feet and just ripping you to pieces. Based on that, my guess would be Tyrannosaurus would be, would be better served to be heavier because the bigger the train, the more momentum you have, the more momentum they have, the harder you can hit and knock somebody down. Whereas Giganotosaurus would probably want to be a little bit lighter so he could run a little bit faster. So in my opinion, I believe that Giganotosaurus probably wouldn't weigh as much as Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, Riley from Buford, Georgia, who would win, Dinosuchus or Sarcosuchus? Wow. Again, these questions of who would win are just simply based on my opinion. There's no evidence to really support one way or the other. So let me give you my opinion. I look at the skull of Star Sarcosuchus and it's very elongated, sort of resembles more of a gharial, nowhere near the same thinness, but he has that elongated gharial-like snout, which to me suggests that his bite force isn't as massive as we suspect. I think he's great for reaching out, grabbing you and pulling you into the water and holding you under. I think that's what he's good for. I look at the skull of Dinosuchus, which I happen to have a Dinosuchus skull in one of these crates behind me. Are you jealous? You should be. I've got a Dinosuchus. I look at him, he's really got the typical crocodilian skull, the big rounded snout. So my guess is his bite force is probably greater than the bite force of Sarcosuchus because he has a more compact skull and the jaw length is not as great. And the longer your jaws are, the less power you have at the end of them. It's just basic, it's basic engineering. I don't care how big you are, when your snout is incredibly long, towards the middle and end of your snout, you lose a tremendous amount of power because your muscle doesn't run to the end of your nose. So with Dinosuchus, I would say if he got the first bite and could hang on, he could probably rip the other guy to pieces. But Sarcosuchus has got a much longer snout, which gives him a much longer uh, distance to keep his body away during the fight. If these two giant crocodiles met, who knows, it's a toss of a coin. I just couldn't tell you who would win. But it's a very good question, Ryan. Finally, River from, how do you pronounce this? Toby Hanna, Pennsylvania. Hello, Mr. George. Do you think that raptors may have groomed themselves because they were very intelligent and social animals? I also sort of relate them to modern primates. A very, very good question, River. This is very good. Um, yes, I believe that dinosaurs that live in family groups probably had some of the same behaviors that a lot of family animals have. Grooming is a very important feature. And the reason for that is it's not just because you're keeping the other guy's feathers cleaned or not because you're picking bugs off the other guy, but it's more to bond socially. We look at primates who pick, you see them all the time picking stuff off the other ones. Well, the secondary thing of that is, yeah, you pick them off and you get something to eat. It's a little shot of protein. But the number one reason for that is for bonding. It's to bring the family closer together. And so I have no doubt that dinosaurs like uh, raptors probably did that sort of same thing. They may have used their front teeth, which if you look at their front teeth, they're a little more compact, which would be a little better for preening and nipping. Not, I mean, they're also great for taking the meat off the bone, but when you look at them, they have a couple of front teeth that might have been ideal for that. In fact, uh, Dr. Robert Bacher, one time I was looking at a Tyrannosaurus skull with him and he pointed out Tyrannosaurus's very front teeth are all built the same way, very tight and compact, which would suggest that they may have been capable of preening. And as more evidence emerges and it looks more and more likely that uh, dinosaurs had feathers, at least predatory dinosaurs had feathers, then it probably stands to reason that um, they, if they had feathers, they probably preened them. All right, before I sign off, I gotta show you guys something really cool. Uh, this is the skull of an ankylosaurus. Ugh! I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm gonna try to hold it up. But this is the skull of an ankylosaurus. Any of you guys that like the ankylosaurus, this gives you an idea of just how big their head was. You can see this guy's eye, eye is nearly the size of my face. So that's the skull of a giant ankylosaurus. And one other thing before we go, this is the tail club of Cycania. This is the tail club of a Cycania. Pretty massive weapon, isn't it? 
How'd you like to have that thing hit you in the head? All right, if you guys have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, fill out the Ask Dinosaur George page, and I'll do my best to answer your question, but I can't guarantee it because I travel a lot. Until next time, for you young people, practice your reading because being a good reader is very important. And for everybody else, for everybody, not everybody else, everybody, I appreciate your good manners. It speaks highly of who you are, and there's nothing more pleasant for me than to interact with people that have good manners. It makes the world a much better place. Till next time, take care, everybody. I'll see you soon.